Welcome to the Bile Balance Health Cast, episode number 487, an interview with a patient at Bile Balance Health, Judge Brian Dunlop. Bile Balance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of Bile Balance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Brian came to Kathy uh, over four years ago. He was suffering from a number of conditions and concerns that he had avoided and put off dealing with, didn't know what to do with, because he's stubborn and he's <laughs> somewhat educated. And he said, I can handle this. Like so many of us, I can handle this. And then he found out that, that there were things that could be done. So we want to talk about some of those things today. We want to talk about what, what brought you in. You, you were scheduled for three consecutive surgery, uh, shoulder surgeries when you came to see Kathy? Well, a hip surgery. <clears throat> And I had uh, decided not to do shoulders, uh, but that was 10 years, 20 years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> but I've, I've continually you struggled had, with it. You had the pain. I've continually had <laughs> uh, swelling uh, and issues with terrible stiffness is one of the biggest problems. I remember working with you. We both worked together on the Child Abuse and Neglect Review Board. And I would watch you try to get up out of a chair after you'd been sitting for an hour or two having conversations with people. And, and it was a painful struggle for you to get up. Was it a similar kind of struggle for you to get out of bed in the morning or whenever you were, were seated for a while? Do you have trouble with that? Oh, wish. You end up with stiffness and you end up, I ended up with swelling, <clears throat> which was always a problem. So uh -huh. you get moving in the morning. So Brian and I are not only doctor patient, but also friends. And, and so every year we, we are together at Thanksgiving, Christmas, that, those, those uh, uh, parties. And every year he would talk to me about his blood pressure went up and, and his shoulder, he was, he was thinking about so shoulder surgery again. And, and every year you slowly got out of a chair slower. So when, we talk, when I talked to you at first, you said, eh, don't need this. I'm not doing that. I can figure it out myself because he's that kind of guy. I mean, he's, he's very accomplished. He's very smart. He has, in his whole life, he's done everything he wanted to do. So this is, he's like many of my patients. It's hard to give up and say, yeah, I need some help. But when we started talking and you gave me your symptoms, which they were more than just blood pressure and you had fatigue, you had you were having muscle shrinkage and your strength was decreasing. You may not remember that because it's gone. But these are the things that I wrote down in your chart when we were talking. And they were things that did bother you. And then the benefit of being a friend was that I got to watch him get better. <laughs> it was awesome. And um, and every everybody noticed it. So uh, when you go when you are in Clayton and you're talking to your friends, I get lots of referrals from you. So what do you say to them? I said, well, if you want to live like you're living now and slowly degenerating, stay and just don't do anything about it. And it, it's amazing to watch your friends and over years, and then all of a sudden you'll see something. You say, well, I haven't seen somebody in six months, and I'll see them, I go, damn, they look old. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and their clothes don't fit. His shirt doesn't fit that fella like it used to. And they're shrinking. But you know, it's a similar phenomenon when you look at a baby. If you watch <laughs> a baby every single day, you don't really have the perspective of how much they're changing, how much they're growing, mm -hmm. if you encounter them all the time. But if you don't see them for six months, then you're like, whoa, that kid has really grown. And what you're saying is that you and your friends in a particular age group have that same deteriorating process day after day after day that's not dramatically noticeable. But if you don't see them for a period of time, then you can see a change, and it's stunning. So, I, and I had a secondary interest in making sure that you were well, because you're my best friend's brother, and 
I and I know a lot about your family. You have uh, you have Alzheimer's in your family. Right. Your mother had Alzheimer's and at early onset. And um, I didn't want that to happen to you or to Beth or to David, but I don't have control of David. So <laughs> no one does. So but I but I was interested also in what I could see and also what I couldn't see. So um, but it would be there in the future. So we've um, we've talked about this and tell us a little bit about how old your mom was. Just just give us an idea of just a little picture of how old she was and what happened and what we don't want to have happen to you. <coughs> well, my mom, uh, she died in 2009 after spending eight and a half years in, a, in the nursing home uh, in the Alzheimer's unit, which is a lockup unit. She couldn't speak, but she was very mobile. And we saw it coming back in probably 2000, 2001. Uh, How old was she then? Uh, she was born in 24. Okay. So she was 75, 75. 76, and she compensated very well. Mm -hmm. But you, as you, as Brett was saying, you, you see these people every day, you don't notice the degeneration that's occring. Well, and, until and, and something comes up. In my experience, they're very skilled at hiding it. I mean, they learn to answer well, she was questions brilliant. that make and you so. think they answered your question. They don't have a clue what you've said. No. I mean, they're, if you watch people that have dementia, that's what you'll see. Is you, you, you can't pin them down on something because they give uh, responses like, well, whatever you think is the best choice. You know, So you think you're having a conversation that they're responding to, but they don't know the answer. You know, What's your favorite Christmas carol? Oh, the one you like best is the one I like best. <laughs> you know? And so yeah. you don't know that they've just shown you that and so you, you didn't see that with your mother either for a while At, for a long time you didn't and then it starts to then, then it started to dawn on bath my sister uh more so she she could see it because it would be well what's your favorite christmas carol oh you know yeah and, and, uh -huh. and that would be my mom's pat answer oh you know uh -huh. or yes oh that's so nice yeah uh, mm -hmm. Never, uh, never a direct response to the question, mm -hmm. and then it got to where you couldn't redirect her off of mm -hmm. something she was doing. And uh, <clears throat> that's what about the fear and the anxiety? Did you go through stages of that, being afraid of things and paranoid? <clears throat> the problem there was we we didn't really know. It affected a part of her brain first that was her speech. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And her speech was the first thing that got affected. And after that, it was hard to tell what was really going on with her. But, I mean, it would be 3 o'clock in the morning, and she'd be wanting to go out in the backyard to work on the flowers. And, and you'd figure that out because mm -hmm. she'd oh, uh, But then that's, that's what you worry about. But that's what you don't want to have happen to yourself or, or to, your, to your friends. And so when you see that happen, it's not always, I mean, genetics is, genetics can be there and not show which is what we're trying to do. It's called epigenetics. We're trying to, we're trying to, even if we don't know if Brian has those genetics, but his mother did, and we're just trying to make sure that those genetics don't show up if he does. And so part or, of that has to do delay the onset as much as ten years. Right. If, if the genetics are mm -hmm. there and it's coming if, from the data that you have that you've shown mm -hmm. me, you can buy as much as ten years more of by taking life. testosterone pellets. Yes. And getting, getting your, and for women, taking testosterone and estrogen gives you 20 years. Jane was on estrogen, but that w didn't do the trick. But testosterone may have, but we didn't know that then, and there's no going back. So when, but, but that experience of, the, of the, their whole family and us kind of as observers was striking to me. And it was something I didn't ever want to see in any of my friends. I didn't want to have to visit them in nursing homes and say, oh, my God, I could have done something. And so I harassed Brian. <laughs> I, a good, I harassed a good you. For it. Yeah. I harassed you. And I kept saying, I didn't want to say, I want you to do this because I don't want you to have Alzheimer's. I just said, you know, you look like you don't feel good. And, and his blood pressure was going up and up and up. And they were having trouble controlling it. He had to find the right doctor. That was true to help his blood pressure, but also testosterone lowered his blood pressure as well. So he doesn't have a uh, uncontrolled blood pressure, which is 
is not good for your heart, not good for your brain, not good for, it increases your risk of stroke. So we don't want to have that. We want to control blood pressure and, and his is controlled now. He and does. And muscle mass. And his mu look at his muscle mass. I mean, he's, sure, I mean, sure. we're both 65. <laughs> we're both 65 and, you know, you don't usually see 65 year olds who have well-defined, well-defined. I have better muscles now than I did um, when I was 35, but that's simply because I have more time to work out. <laughs> but you have to have testosterone to make muscle. But you have to have the capacity, and that's what the testosterone gives you. Right. And then if you use that capacity, you can be stronger, you can keep your balance, you can stay upright, you can walk, you don't need a walker, you don't need a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and you can age in a more healthy and controlled way. One of the things I'm, that's true, one of the things I'm, I always look at is what's a trend in Brian, Brian and everybody else's blood work? What's the trend? I mean, it may look great for four years, and then all of a sudden something starts slipping because we're getting older. Can't really stop old, getting older, but um, unless you <laughs> unless you don't get older. Right. In any case, I look at, at the trend in you, all of your uh, blood work, and one of the things that was great right after testosterone started was his IGF-1 or growth hormone. It just went up and it stayed up and it's been up until the last six months. So I'm looking at that. He does nothing different. He has he still has great muscle mass. He still has strength and stamina. But I'm looking at that as growth hormone helps your brain recover and grow and make new cells. So I'm looking at it as something I can't see happening, but something that might be happening and I need to do something about it. So we're going to talk about, we haven't decided yet, using a growth hormone stimulator like somorolin or epimorlin. Those are both peptides that we use to stimulate your own growth hormone. It's not growth hormone. It doesn't have the same risks. But we also talked about a new thing uh, to improve blood flow all over his body, and that's Neo40, which is it's a supplement. And he, knows that he read a paper that I gave him yesterday about nitric oxide. And since I already know about this, did you? What did you glean from that, or did it make you? Did it make you want to try that to see if you could be even better than you are? Yes. After after going over that with you, and then we had a discussion about it. Uh, <clears throat> the benefits that it, it can bring forth for you. That's what I need, and I you read it knowing I have hyperstolic or diastolic hypertension which is always a concern, and internal inflammation, mm -hmm. which you also put in check with Celebrex mm -hmm. in the combination, uh, which my cardiovascular doctor said he should have caught that way back when, but he didn't until he saw all the blood work that you had me do. And Good. <clears throat> so it worked out, and, and you had said you got to chat with him first, show him this before you fill that prescription. Because I don't really want to take over the. I'm not a cardiologist. <coughs> I'm I'm trying. I'm an anti-aging specialist. I, I don't want to make my cardiologist angry with me, and at the at the risk of them being angry with you. Yeah. You know. So they were all they were on board completely. Well, that's good. You and have said good they should have they should have caught that. But they don't do the same blood workup that you. Right. Do. They, mm -hmm. They're not taking twelve red tops to get started and running. I don't know how many tests. Well, <clears throat> twenty four. To start out with but we don't do this all the time it's not like every time you get hormone or you get testosterone no. we do it twice and then we do it once a year and not necessarily all of them for everyone we kind of hone in on what's what your problem is and take off some of the tests that you don't need mm. but the but neo 40 is a supplement that uh, makes nitric oxide and that's the same thing as what Viagra does only it does it with a very expensive drug so nitric oxide dilate your blood vessels throughout your body so that you get better oxygenation. Yeah, it's not a localized thing like Viagra. It's through right. your whole body process. Yeah. And, and Brian, we want to thank you for being willing to share your information with us and talking with us today. And also for the referrals that you give and the conversations you have with your friends and people that you care about. Because it's an important thing. People believe in testimonials. And your presence here is giving us a testimony about how good, good. this has been for you. And we thank you very much for that, and we hope that the rest of you become aware of it and give some thought to whether or not you need to replace your testosterone and your estrogen and take Neo40 or whatever else you need to do to stay healthy for as long as you can. Thank you, Brian. Yep. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. 
You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.